Hi, my name's Dee, and I love to suffer. So, I've been gone for a while. Really sorry about that. Subject matter today is going to be a little rough. Um, clearly I love to suffer because I am making a video about the allegations against Army Hammer. And I have a lot of feelings. I have a lot of thoughts. So, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I spoke... I want to say briefly about uh, how I felt about the situation and how it's being framed. I want to first say trigger warning for abuse, sexual assault, manipulation, gaslighting, just a huge trigger warning. If this is something that you cannot deal with, I do not blame you. That is a-okay. If this is something that is incredibly triggering for you, just the subject matter uh, in itself, I 100% welcome you to the other videos that I have on my channel. I think that I'm pretty funny but I'm gonna try to bring a bit of levity to this and I'm not not to say that I'm gonna you know make fun or anything like that I believe victims I want that to be first and foremost in the message of this everything that is mentioned here should have consent that's really just the message I want to bring a bit of levity to this and talk about my personal experience with um, this subject matter and the feelings and opinions that I have but yeah, I just want it to be said, stated, and pushed on through, I believe, victims. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the absolute headassery that this all is. It's just, oh my god, demonic. So, I want to say maybe like a couple weeks ago, it had been brought to my attention that there was this weird thing going around about Army Hammer being a cannibal. And of course, that caught my attention immediately. I was like, nigga, what? Girl, okay, I guess. Go off, I guess. And every time I hear something strange, I always end up saying, look, as long as the people are consenting and they're both adults and they're both cool with what's going on, like, who am I to tell you what to do, what butters your biscuit, what gets you hot and twerking and popping? That is not, that's not for me to choose. Like. I know this is going to sound a little weird, unpopular opinion, my humble onion, this is my opinion. Those Heaven's Gate people, they did what they wanted to do. It was their choice. They all seemed pretty happy doing it. Of course, I feel for their families, but like, who am I to tell them people? They wrong. Y'all do what y'all want. It's your life. They were all consenting adults and they made a decision. I feel like it's the same here. Of course, I don't want my loved ones to do this and baby, you can never catch me in no bunk ass tracksuit like that and with the bowl cut. I, I digress, I digress. The subject matter here is very serious and whenever it comes to sexuality, sexy, sexy things, I am all for the wild shit. I am all for the wild shit, okay? If you look at my other videos, you see what I'm about. I know what I'm about. And I know it's a lot of people out there living their lives, they're also about what I'm about, which is why I am in the Kingster community. So a little backstory on me. I got into the Kingster lifestyle, I would say, when I turned like 18. I was in college and I used to be on 4chan. Honestly, just a bunch of like little sites. I used to stream video games with this little group or whatever. This man messaged me and asked me to like humiliate him and make fun of him. And in the back of my head, I was like, bitch, for what? For what? What you want me to do? You want to make fun of you? Okay. And I loved it. <laughs> I got to be mean to somebody and they like wanted me to be mean to them. Like I'm all about respecting people's boundaries. Like I like to respect boundaries, but like something about it was so fun, you know? With that happening, I kind of started looking to, into some shit. I got on the Tumblr. I started off as a straight sub. Like, I was just like, beat my ass, daddy. <laughs> and then I discovered I like beating niggas up. I like beating niggas up. I like beating them up. I like bullying niggas. I like doing it. It was fun. And I was like, ooh, what's that? What does that mean? It means I'm a switch, girl. I'm a switch. I started doing 
phone sex. I was a phone sex operator, which was honestly super fun. I really loved it. All of the clients that I had were so nice. Like, I low-key miss y'all. I really do. But it was fun bullying old white dudes via Skype. I had a man who wanted me to degrade him while he wore a diaper. And I was like, so you mean you want to pay me for that? And I was good at it. I had a good time doing it. It was just good old fun consenting adults doing weird shit. And that is where the fun lies in consent. Okay, guys, when you both agree and you have your terms and conditions of what you will do, what you won't do, your hard fucking limits. When you get to a person who where all the shit matches up and you guys can both have a mutually exciting experience, that is where shit gets poppin'. With me being on both ends of the spectrum, um, with me enjoying masochism and sadism, or sadomasochism, when I was reading these messages and I was looking at just how everything played out, because at first you, get, you got a little bit. It was like they were trickling shit out. Little bits of information. So first information I get, Army Hammer's a fucking cannibal. And I'm like, my nigga, huh? Then it goes to has this tiny white girl on all fours in a video. And I'm like, what? Did she, was she okay with being recorded? Like, what? What happened? So like, I'm looking at that and the whole time I'm thinking like, what in the fuck is going on? The more I looked into this situation, the more I feel like I got my cap peeled the fuck back. I was like, whoa, ah, wah. <laughs> it felt like somebody hit 60 on me and we was just, my hair was in the wind, my wig almost flew off. It was a mess. I looked into it even more and I came across a Instagram profile. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put her name in there. I think that she wants to get the word out. When I say this person's name, I want all of the people who do follow me, who respect any opinion that I have, who respect me just as a person, do not go bother this person. If you are not in the same mindset as I am, if you do not just straight up believe victims and you want all of the facts, that's your prerogative, but I'm asking you very kindly, do not go harass this person. Do not go try to shame her for the experiences that, that she's been through. And what I really want you to think about, because there's a lot of people who cannot just have sympathy for other human beings. If you cannot have sympathy for someone you do not know, think about if this person was your loved one. It's fucked to say, and I hate that the world works this way, but think about if this was your mom or your sister or your brother or you know your best friend if they were sending you these messages that they had and you wouldn't talk to them crazy as shit then do not do the same thing to this person um they've already experienced enough they've already been victimized by one person that they clearly loved um it seems like all of these people genuinely really cared about um allegedly army hammer and that trust was abused it was uh, disregarded it was not held to the standard that it should be held to um the person's profile is called uh house of effie it has a bunch of highlights of messages that not only belong to her but other people who allegedly were victimized by um, army hammer the reason that this shit really irks me is because a lot of the articles that I have been reading that I, there's just the titles off the rip reading the titles. I'm like, fuck you. They're calling what is being depicted in these messages BDSM. The foundation and the core of BDSM is consent and trust. When those things are overstepped and boundaries are overstepped and trust is violated, it is no longer BDSM. It is assault. It is rape. I feel like I need to say this for the boys in the back, girls in the back, they thems in the back. You can take your consent at any point. At any point. If you decide while you are making out with someone that you don't want to make out with them anymore and you lean back and say, I don't want to do this anymore. That is you revoking your consent and that is your right to your bodily autonomy. You have autonomy over your body. 
which means you should be able to decide what does and doesn't happen to it. When those rules are set up, when both people understand the other party and you both consent to doing the weird shit, then you can get it popping. Keep in mind the entire way, either of you can revoke consent. I really want that to be the core message of this video. Consent can be given and taken away at any point in time and it's your responsibility to respect those things. Reading a lot of these messages was giving me, girl, it was giving me war flashbacks. She was really giving, oh bitch, I'm triggered. She's, she was giving, she was really giving um, dog staring at cupcake meme of him having war flashbacks. She was giving. And I was sitting literally in my bathtub, just scrolling through, like tapping through the highlights. And I was like, ooh, eh, wow, wow. It felt like I was instantly transported back to a point in time in my life that of course, I've, I've definitely healed past it. And I'm definitely a completely different person now, but it immediately broke my heart. It made me so incredibly upset to read these women having their trust abused. So, I want to start off by defining what BDSM is and because I know that the people who watch my videos just even if you don't if you're not a person who knows who the hell I am I respect your intelligence and I believe in your ability to get on motherfucking Google and Google it so I'm not gonna be doing too much in-depth explaining um, of every single term that I use. I believe in your ability to Google my darlings. So um, by definition, BDSM is a variety of often erotic practices like role play, bondage, discipline, dominance, submission, and sadomasochism and other related dynamics. There might be some people who don't exactly understand uh, sadomasochism. So sadomasochism in so many words is the giving or receiving of pain for sexually pleasurable reasons, like being spanked or being slapped during, you know, intimate times, or I don't know, being choked. I do understand that there are a few people who don't understand this lifestyle, which is fine. You know, like I respect your right to have vanilla sex at 9 p.m. on a Wednesday, every Wednesday, girl. I respect that you carry on. I respect your right to have boring sex. It's lit. If you having a good time and y'all both consenting, girl, have a ball. Have two for me. As a person who enjoys the kinky shit, and like I explained, I'm a switch, so I do enjoy both. Reading the titles of the messages that I, girl, the messages, I will get into the messages shortly, but for, oof. But reading those and thinking about what I know the core of BDS is, which is consent and trust and respecting your fucking partner. Um, it was really upsetting me and my home girls. I was like, girl, what y'all got these vanilla niggas out here thinking this is how we get down. That's not what we do over here. And as we go through these messages, there is a, a term that, that will be used that you'll see in some of the messages. It's CNC. I'm sorry, I just immediately thought of Because it's TNT, dynamite. Yeah, sorry. It's CNC. And CNC stands for consensual non-consent. Let's go ahead and break it down. This is going to upset a lot of y'all. And it's going to make a lot of people act very stupid. And I really, really need you to know that I will block you if you disrespect any of these people's coping mechanisms. Uh, I will block you if you're rude, okay? Because it's a very sensitive topic. And I just don't understand why you goddamn goons cannot have sex with people and let them enjoy their consensual agreed upon sex. No matter how crazy it sounds to you. Respect other people's ways of coping and living their lives, okay? I'm trying to be respectful. I'm respectful to the places and the people and the institutions that deserve to be respected. CNC, stating for consensual non-consent, usually is practiced by people who have um, rape fantasies. There are some people who, when they are assaulted, when they are sexually assaulted, they fall into wanting to reenact the trauma that they went through. That might be confusing to a lot of you. That's fine. I'm asking that you respect how rape survivors cope. So some people will, you know, get into therapy, cope with things in a 
healthy way by exercising, by changing their diet, by moving, by just giving their life in a complete overhaul. There will be people who will experience sexual assault who end up becoming repulsed by sex. They will lose all interest in it and honestly gain an aversion to sex. And there are also people who will decide that they need to try to understand why they reacted the way that they did, that their body reacted the way that it did. There are plenty of people who survive rape that think back and think it felt good. And to those people, I need you to understand that there's nothing wrong with you. Bodies react to stimuli. When you are stimulated in certain ways, your body will react. Um, it's something that you can't help and it isn't your fault that your body reacted the way that it did. And I mean this for people with all parts. If you were assaulted and some of it felt good or some of it felt nice, that isn't anything wrong with you. There isn't anything that you did wrong. Rape is only the shame of the rapist. It will never be the shame of you. But I do understand the feeling of shame that comes with it. Some people partake in consensual non-consent. So when these things happen, when they do bring this up, it's often very shameful for them. They do feel awkward, they do feel weird about it, and they do feel bad about it. And again, no one can tell you how to cope with your trauma. I am in the firm belief that if you're with someone that you trust, that you love, that respects the trauma and coping mechanism that you may develop because of it, and they attempt to help guide you in a safe and loving way, I support that. When you have these people who are engaging in consensual non-consent, usually the person who's more submissive or the person who experienced the rape will attempt to gain that power back. Because when you look at rape, it is 100% someone trying to gain power over you. It is a power struggle. It is so that they can feel bigger and better and badder. Unfortunately, a lot of times rapists just get away. Um, and it's because of rape culture. They'll ask, what were they wearing? What were they drinking? Were they... It's basically them saying that the, the person who was assaulted asked for it. And that is so fucking unfair. And it's such a stupid fucking way of thinking. It is never a rape victim's fault that they were raped. And if you feel that that is the case, then please fuck off. Like you can go, you can just fuck off if that's how you feel. No one wants to have the fear and the shame of honestly having somebody maybe you trust, a stranger, a family member. No one wants that to happen to them. So when it does and they feel that shame and you ask them, well, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you say no? Why didn't you? I want you to think of a time where you felt completely powerless and you felt absolutely terrified and there was literally nothing that you could do to make whatever the event was stop. That is what these people experience. They freeze up. There are certain ways that your body can react to fear or terror or excitement. There is fight or flight, which is what is most commonly referred to. Most people will say, oh, my, it activated my fight or flight. But there's also a fawn response. Fight, self-explanatory, you fight. Flight, run, get away from it, escape. Or fawn, which is to submit and to make things go as smoothly as possible so that you can preserve your own life. A lot of rape victims end up going through quite literally all three of those. And fawn, which is just kind of shutting down during. And I know that it seems like I'm kind of getting off topic because I should be discussing the whole army hammer thing, but I feel like it, this needs to be discussed before I can go into this so that maybe you can have a little sympathy because I'm not saying that the people who comment often or have commented often on my videos think this way. I have a lot of really amazing people that follow me that follow me on Instagram so they know how I feel about this already and I'm very passionate about it because I believe in consensual fun. So when I talk about things like this or I go into detail or try to explain these things, it is quite literally so that people who maybe don't think this way can have another to 
just maybe try to put themselves in someone else's shoes, which you really shouldn't do. You should and you should inherently have empathy for others. When you hear someone was hurt, you should feel bad that they were hurt. <laughs> it's just a, it's it seems like something that's very very far off in 2021 in the world that we live in, but like I am a very empathetic person and I feel empathy for those around me. I want others to experience empathy. (laughs) One of the things that I read in the conversations with Army Hammer, allegedly, and the victims is he recommended that they play without a safe word. He said, that's where the fun starts. I need you to know that if you are having sex with somebody and they have you tied up or if they are flogging your ass or if they are choking you, you and them need to know that motherfucking safe word. Do not play without a goddamn safe word. Do not play with an entity that does not respect your safe word because that, as soon as you say that safe word and they keep going after that, that is rape. That's you withdrawing the consent. If they move past that safe word, the, if you throw that bitch out there and you say, uh, Apple, and they keep going past Apple, no, no. And if someone recommends that you do anything without a safe word, look at them just like the, honestly, I'ma let you freeze frame so that you can use this as a reaction image. like. No safe word. Don't make me go get the raid. I will spray you, bitch. Absolutely fucking not. No. Let's 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 push on through because I feel like I, I I sat on CNC for a very long time. I sat on that while reading through this um, person's Instagram, their highlights. I saw every single thing that I'm reading here is a big ass red flag. It's all just red flag city. So I'm gonna be reading some of these messages and I guess kind of reacting to it. Now I don't know what was said before at all, but uh, army, I can't even explain it. Victim, I'm all marked up by the way, from my face to my neck, to my knees and everything and Let me just interject here. I love a good bruise, you know? Like I love a good fruit of my labor. I love that. But only if I asked and I would let my partner know that that's what I wanted and we both agreed and safe words were already established, you know? Army, I swear to God, this shit is dangerous and can make you a cannibal serial killer. Are you not embarrassed? This is embarrassing. Victim. So you have to take control of it or you can become a rapist serial killer, LOL. Now look, I'm not gonna sit here and say I haven't had like weird conversations. Like bitch, I've lived. (laughs) I've certainly had some weird conversations, but like reading past this, this just, so basically this man is saying like, yeah, I got to beat the hell out of you. You seemed cool with it at that point. And again, you can be okay with something at one point and then change your mind. At any point in time, you can like getting flogged and hung upside down by your labia. And if there's a certain point after that that you're like, I don't really like that no more. That is okay. It's okay to change your mind. Army. Literally nothing matters in that zone. An earthquake could have hit the building and I'd still be trying to eat you in the rubble. I'm not gonna sit here and say, I wouldn't love to have somebody just obsessed with my ass okay like I would literally beat somebody's ass for you but I guess what I'm saying is I'm king shaming cannibals right now I'm king shaming you niggas you cannot have a bite of me okay I understand that feral attraction I felt it I felt like oh my god like I don't know what to do with these feelings I kind of just want to bite you I get that but this nigga really wants to eat people. Girl, this earth is ghetto as hell. I'm a person who hyper fixates, okay? Like I got the BPDs, I got the ADHDs, I got the manic depression, bitch. I have been insane before. I'm an insane person. 
But as an insane person, I do understand consent. I do understand that my kinks will not always line up with the person that I am smashing on. I get that. But you have to fit yourself to the person. Like y'all have to meet in the middle somewhere. When I first read these messages, it was always about what he wanted. Let me tell y'all little submissives out here, some tink. When it comes to power in a daddy dom little girl relationship or a sadomasochistic relationship, the power is equal. Hot take, spicy, spicy meatball take. The power is equal. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I'm not done with my TED talk. So what I mean by the power is equal is your dom does not have any more power over you than you have over your dom. And you know where that power comes from, mijita? It comes from consent. Your dom also has the right to consent. They can say no to things. You can say no to things. You can change your mind halfway through getting your clip bit, bitch. You can you can change your mind halfway through. You can be like, ah, 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 well, hey, look, you know what, cacao? <laughs> Y'all watch Portlandia? I just started watching Portlandia again. You can hit his ass with the cacao. You can say cacao at any point in time and that person needs to stop realistically 100 percent if you are in a healthy bdsm relationship kinkster relationship the power is equal because you both respect each other's boundaries and you both understand that you both reserve the right to change your mind to withdraw to take it back to say uh -uh, i don't want to do that at any point in time anything pushed past that Either it's already been talked about, already been consented to, and you're both in agreement. If you guys cannot come to agreement with it, then take it off the table. If that person doesn't want to take it off the table and y'all can't come to an agreement, go. I'll beat them up for you. I'm going to read this part because, bitch, I, I got questions and feelings. Okay, so this is a continuation of the original conversation of him basically saying, like, when I'm with you or if I just get into the zone, which is like that weird cannibal zone this nigga getting into, like he a goddamn zombie. Basically saying, like, I can't control myself. Okay. I'm listening, girl. It's upsetting me and my homegirls, but continue. So, Army, but I'm not sure how much was motivated by not wanting the neighbors to call the cops. Once I got you away from the front door, it went away completely. Victim, ah, go on. That's really it. I don't know. I was worried in the kitchen that you truly wanted to stop and had the thought you brought up earlier. We don't have a safe word, haha. -ha. What did I just say? Always have a fucking safe word. If you're doing shibari, always make sure you have blunt tip scissors so you can cut the person out of there if some shit go left. Do studying, practice, research, and read. And that's for all of this. If you are interested in daddy dom little girl relationships, if you are interested in any type of BDSM, research it, read, go find books, ask other kinksters, follow pages that pertain to that lifestyle. Do not just settle on one place because everyone does things differently and there's plenty of different ways that you can do all of these things safely. You want to be knowledgeable in all of them. Do not get your ass caught up with a train stuck up your ass because you didn't know not to go past your butthole. The reason that I paused is because she had brought up that they didn't have a safe word for all of whatever the fuck he was doing to this girl. And I'll read this part again. I was worried in the kitchen that you truly wanted to stop. Her body language was saying, I want to stop. And mind you, Army Hammer is 6'5", which I love me a tall man. But a lot of the women that he went after were either younger, much, much smaller. Like I'm heavy, bitch. Like I don't look like it, but I'm like, I'm probably like 170. Like I'm heavy. I'm a dense bitch. I say, I've said it before. I'm dense, but I'm 5'7", one something, 160 something, 170 something. These girls are probably 5'2", 90 fucking pounds. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that because for some reason, them girls, them little white girls, they built different. Like why, why y'all look like, why y'all weigh so little? Like how I do that? Cause I don't want to be 160. <laughs> This man is a large person going after younger and smaller people, which cool because I too have a size difference kink, bitch. Bring me a big old tall burly motherfucker. Love that, the flavor, love it. When you have someone who is in this lifestyle, there are plenty of predators in the, 
in the kinkster universe. There's a lot of them taking advantage of people who don't know that they should have a safe word. There's plenty of people who don't know that you are allowed to revoke consent because they want to make a good impression and they want to be the ultimate sub where they listen to everything that their master says or their daddy says. There's plenty of people, I've been that bitch. I'm embarrassed, I know, I am embarrassed. But I've been that person to where I was like, well that fuck, this fucking hurts and I don't, wow, I don't like that. But I wanna be a good sub, like, I guess I'll just kinda push on through. You don't have to do that. Communication should be kept the entire time. It is okay to ask someone, does this hurt? Do you want me to stop? Are you okay with me doing this? Do you want me to do it harder? Like, and you can be like, go harder keep choking be my ass like y'all keep talking to each other i don't y'all out here just grunting and silent fucking y'all not asking questions i'm trying to hear what you just say oh you said fuck up speak up can you turn it up turn it up that's my favorite song ah y'all need to be communicating the adhd girl you know how she do she be jumping up jumping out so reading that all of the things that army just said to summarize again if y'all forgot what the fuck i said because i'm all over the goddamn place he said he was worried that she wanted to stop and he remembered that she mentioned that they didn't have a safe word and her response was i did truly want to stop for most of the time a ha 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 and that ha 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 is not her thinking that the situation was funny it's the same reason that when you hit on somebody and you're intimidating and they kind of go, <laughs> it was nervous laughter. Not only was it nervous laughter, look, I cannot, I cannot speak to how she was thinking, but I can say that in my personal experience, when I've been in situations like this, where I was put in a situation I didn't want to be in, that I was very uncomfortable in, but I still went through with it because I was terrified of them being mad at me, them hurting me, or honestly, the fear of them not talking to me again. You know how many dicks I done sucked out of just fear? Girl, too many, too many, too many. Break. I have a story. I went on a date with a young man. I'd already gone on dates with him before. He had been a little aggy when we went out. He was trying to fight people and shit. And I was like, this is kind of annoying because I just want to like, I'm low. When I drink, when I go and hang out with people, girl, do not be trying to get me to walk around. Yes, I wore Converse in a coochie cutter dress. Yes, I did. Cause I want to be comfortable, but don't be having me trying to walk around. When I drink, I get sleepy. I want to go to bed. Y'all be trying to club hop, bar hop and shit. Ah! I want to sit in one area and have a nice conversation. So I was mad that he was turning the evening up because I'm like, you're going to get us kicked out of places and I just want to enjoy my evening. We never actually became an item because he wasn't interested in doing that. And at that point in time, girl, I was just trying to get that dick and go. I was. I was interested in another young man. That wasn't working out. I will never tell that story because, girl, that was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. And it fucked me up a lot. Very, very badly mentally. <laughs> embarrassing i was on the outs with a young man that i really really liked so i decided you know what i gotta kind of put myself back out there the gentleman that i'd already gone on a date with before came into town he asked me if i wanted to go have dinner we go have dinner i'm thinking about the guy that i'm interested in the whole fucking time and outside of that i have a pretty good date it was a pretty good date we were in his vehicle it was nighttime at this point and he pulls off into a empty parking lot. And all I'm thinking is, nigga, this is not the house. This is not the house, girl. She's not, we're not at the house, sis. This man proceeds to pull his whole dick out. And when he pulled his dick out, I said, that wasn't my plans for this evening, sir. He went into the, the center console and pulled out a bunch of fucking cock rings. And I was like, yo. <laughs> Are you dead ass right now? And you know what I did? I said, uh, I don't really know if this is, this is not what I planned for my evening. I kind of just want to go home and sleep. And he talked to me, talked to me. I'm in this man's vehicle. It's the middle of the fucking night. There's not a single car around in this empty parking lot. So you know what I did? I fucking fawned. I sucked that man's dick. I didn't want to at all. I was very upset the entire time I was fucking doing it. But 
I did it because I was terrified that if I said no, I was gonna get the shit beat out of me in this empty parking lot in the middle of the fucking night with no one around. I watch a lot of true crime, y'all. I really do. I watch a lot of true crime. And it doesn't matter that I had sucked his dick before. It doesn't matter that I consented before. At that point in time, if it is not an emphatic yes, then always assume the answer is no. And that's for everyone. If it isn't an emphatic yes, if you get down bucket, y'all in the room, you ready to bust it wide and you look at your partner and you ask, Are, do you still wanna do this? Are you still into this? You pull back during the kiss, do you still wanna do this? If it is a, I guess, if it's, I guess is a no, it's a no, I guess, that's a no. If it's not a hell yeah, absolutely, yup, then always assume it's a no. When you move in, always just assume it's a no. Because it's a lot of people that I see is like, oh my God, y'all be complaining about everything. You can't just ask for consent for everything. You can't just ask for consent. For yes, you can, dummy. You goddamn goon. Yes, you can. Y'all out here putting yourselves in situations because you can't control yourself. Yes, you can. You're just a fucking jackass. That's the tea. It's a lot of people being mad that we are moving into a society where assume it's no is hopefully becoming the norm for most people. But there's a few stragglers that do not want to come to terms with the fact that like y'all have raped somebody. That's why y'all get mad. That's why you get all fucking mad when you think, oh my God, y'all gotta ask for consent for everything. Man, it is to the point where if I just try to hold her hand, if I just try to grab her, I don't know what, what if she changed, what if she changed her mind during it? Then she changed her mind during it. And don't think that it's not some of you other young ladies out there feeling the same way. Oh my God, y'all so sensitive. You, you just gotta do it. Sometimes you gotta do it. Baby, you are a victim. You are a victim. You, you telling me? You know how many times I had to do that shit when I didn't want to? Baby, you are a victim. I am so sorry to you, honey, but you are a victim. You have been victimized. You've been victimized by rape culture. And it's okay if you don't wanna have that conversation with yourself right now. That's okay if you don't wanna have the con, but I'm telling you the facts, baby, you are a victim. You got victimized and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you've been victimized so many times by so many people that they convinced you that shit was normal. It's not, it isn't normal. The things that you didn't want to do and still did and you had to do, you are a victim, honey, and I'm so sorry. Men, women, they thems alike, non-binary folk alike. I'm sorry you were victimized. To the, to the young men, who had sex when they were 13 from an older woman, that person's a rapist. You were victimized and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. It is my hope that y'all start thinking about the things that you do. You can avoid so many of these conversations if you respect other people's autonomy. If you take your L of them saying, now nah, I'm good and go, I promise you your life will be easier. I promise you, you take that L and go, I'm blunt. There's nothing wrong with being blunt. I have been in many a bar, saw a man that looked very good. And I've walked up and said, I think you're very attractive. I am trying to fuck. And either they say yes or no. And that's okay with me. If you say no, that's cool. I, you still fine. Like that don't change shit. You still fine. You don't wanna fuck me. That's okay, baby. You still attractive. I still like what I see. And y'all gotta learn to take them L's with, with, with grace. Okay, if someone says, nah, I'm okay, take it with grace, okay? Anyway, let's get back on topic. I'm sorry, I knew this video was gonna be long as shit cause I'm gonna have to cut a lot of this out. <laughs> I like the burly motherfuckers. Throw me up into the sun, baby. I'm trying to be Icarus, let me fly. Here comes old zombie, zomboni, army hammer, allegedly. There were a few bites where I had to stop myself, but I got totally lost in just biting you. I'm cool with biting consensually, but I don't think this baby, I don't think the girl wanted her, I don't think she wanted to have a whole piece bitten off of her. I'd look, I'm not trying to say what these women were feeling. I can only say what has happened to me and in my humble onion. She asked him, why did he feel like he needed to stop himself? And his response was, I was going to bite off a piece of you, it felt like. And if I did, I knew I'd do it again. I wanted to eat you. Let's get into uh, 
rapist territory. Let's go ahead and get into that. Let's get into it. Army. Well, for not being ready, you took it like a champ. Victim. No, I didn't. I tried to crawl away, and I cried hysterically. Army. She's got to be so surprised. Ha ha. She goes to the pool and came back to an assault victim. Victim. I couldn't even look at you during it. That's how not ready I was. Army. I'm not going to lie. You crying and crawling away while I stalked you down your hallway was so exhilarating. This man is a fucking psycho. Whoever this is, whether it's Army or not, this man is a fucking psycho. Now, I'm not going to read all of the messages that um, Effie has on her page, but this, there is no consent. It is all very him-centric. He's not asking any of these women what they're interested in. He's not asking any of these women if they're okay or not with these things. And another very big thing within the BDSM community is aftercare. When you put someone through something mentally trying, especially when it is sexual, there needs to be aftercare. Needs. It is imperative that there is aftercare. Once you break down all those barriers mentally, physically, and your body has only been focused on pain and exhaustion, there needs to be a reset period in which the person who subjected you to those things comforts you and brings you back down. It's actually very, very nice. I feel like everyone should be doing aftercare. Bitch, I need work aftercare, okay? I be getting yelled at all the time, and I can tell you for a fact that shit is definitely non-consensual, and it be fucking me up mentally. I be fucking tired when I come home, and I need after work aftercare. But anyway, back on topic, when you are doing these things as a dominant or a submissive, both of you deserve aftercare because it can be exhausting subjecting someone through pleasurable pain and experiencing pleasurable pain. There needs to be a point in time in which you both come together and come down, whether that is a hot bath, warm blanket, showering together, something intimate, something soft, something easy to come back down with. Soft words, kind words. It is not easy being in this lifestyle. It's definitely fun, but it's definitely not easy being in this lifestyle because there are rules to this shit. It's you trying a whole lot of things, putting your body in stressful positions, and before any of you motherfuckers try to come in here and be like, well, if it's stressful, I am doing it. The same reason that people like driving fast. The same, the same reason that people, football players like playing football. The same reason that free climbers enjoy free climbing. Yes, physically taxing, rewarding as shit, and it feels good. It's okay to not enjoy any of those, those things. It's okay for you not to like football, not want to free climb. It's okay for you not to want to be into BDSM. It's okay for you 100% not to be interested in consensual non-consent. But what never is okay is harming someone or forcing them to do something they don't want to, disrespecting their autonomy, and disrespecting their trust and consent. It's never gonna be okay. Army asked this question. New question. Have you ever seen a non-consensual person ever be broken but ultimately enjoy it? Or are you always dealing with the shell of a person? What he is describing is not anywhere in the BDSM realm. What he's describing is a victim. I don't know what to tell you. Because if he's attempting to talk about consensual non-consent, clearly the person who just experienced this fucking traumatic ass experience having a 6'5 man chasing them, biting them, and literally making them crawl for their lives, flight, and then them talking about it afterwards and him not immediately thinking, oh my God, I overstepped a boundary. It's not my job to tell him what's exciting to him or not. I'm not going to say it was wrong for him to get some kind of exhilaration from being dominant. But the problem lies in the fact that she very explicitly explained, that was scary for me. I was not prepared for it, which 
in so many words tells me I didn't consent to it and you scared the shit out of me. There was no worry for her afterwards. There was no care or anything afterwards. And the more that I read into it, it's multiple women. And a lot of times when you get these doms, they don't give a shit. They want to have as many subs as they can. There's a lot of women, allegedly, that experience this. And he said, allegedly, the same thing to all of them. And I have very personal experience with loving someone and wanting to sacrifice things for someone, only to find out that the person was saying the same shit to any fucking person who would listen. This showing me I wasn't as special as I thought they thought I was. A lot of times in these situations with these dominants and these submissives is they break them down so far that the things that they do to them that is very clearly abuse, that is very clearly an overstepping of boundaries, turns into them, the sub, craving their attention, hoping that they're as special as their dominant says that they are they're like oh my god well i mean yeah it was a little scary but you know what i'm special let me tell you this it is okay to want to feel special it is okay to want attention it's okay to want to feel sexy it is okay to want to be wanted there is no shame in that. You are a human being. All of us feel it. Beyonce feels it. Barack fucking Obama wants to feel wanted. Think of the people that you care for. They want to feel good. They want to feel wanted. And some people feel those things and want those things in different ways. When you're entering the BDSM community, dominants want to be adored by their subs. Subs want to be doted on and showered with affection by their dominants. That's okay. Yes, it might be an extreme version of those things. It might be an extreme version of that want and that hope for affection. It's okay and it's normal to want those things. So when you see women on Twitter doing the silhouette challenge and you have people being like, y'all got me mad when people exploit you. What is wrong with you? Why do you want to see people suffer, you psychos? You want people to feel bad. Why? With the silhouette challenge, I noticed it yesterday. There's some women who decided to do it nude. Now, some of those women are probably okay with being nude. They're, they probably are okay with people seeing them nude. But there are some people who didn't really understand how the challenge worked. And because red is so easy to lift off of um, video, there were people who were lightening the videos and posting women's nude videos on Twitter. And there were people who were quite literally telling them they deserved to have that happen because they shouldn't have posted themselves in that way. Why is it so hard for you guys to respect other people's decisions to be? I don't know what's happening in any of these people's lives, but if they want to be seen in the way that they they presented it to you, which is with the red on, with the filter on, why would you go above and beyond to disrespect what you already had? It was presented in the way they wanted it to be seen. And some of you damn psychos are out there like, well, if they didn't want it to be, if they didn't want people to manipulate it, then uh, why'd they post it? May you stub your toe. May you drink water and it go down the wrong side. I need y'all to get into some goddamn therapy because I want people to feel good. That's what I want. I want them to safely and non-offensively feel good. I understand that other people have different moral compasses, moral codes, but if you don't like the silhouette challenge, do not look at it. It's a whole tag that you, it's a, it's a whole hashtag you can block to where you don't have to interact. You're wasting energy shaming people who just want to feel good and they felt good when they posted it and then immediately after had someone disrespect them by making them feel bad right after that. It's rape culture. She was asking for it. She should have done it closed. Y'all gang, this is not new. This situation is not new. There are plenty of people who have experienced this from people not Army Hammer. Allegedly, there are plenty of people who've experienced this exact situation. This is not new. And yet every single time it comes out that someone's a goddamn dirt bag taking advantage of people's trust, y'all gotta come out of the goddamn crevices and cracks of the goddamn garbage can crawled out of 
to say she was asking for it if it was so scary why did she come back because there is a dynamic in which these people who manipulate will make it so that person doubts themselves to where they feel like well maybe maybe i wasn't reading the situation right like yeah i didn't feel comfortable and yeah i didn't feel safe yeah it was scary but like maybe i just didn't understand it properly and then they take advantage of that the person comes back maybe maybe there were conversations in which they explained these things and he was like i'm sorry that i made you feel that way and it lulled them into a sense of you know what he's gonna try better he's gonna do better he's gonna be kind to me and then they're right back in the same situation because they want to believe that this person actually cares about them and that's not their fault it isn't their fault they're being taken advantage of and it's so hard to explain because i've been the person that's like you know maybe i maybe i didn't read that situation right maybe it was me maybe maybe i overreacted and then all those years later of me going and running back and forth to this person being like no they didn't mean to make me feel that way they'll give you a good month if that of just good kind behavior before any of you motherfuckers get on here and are like well he was married and they knew allow me to submit this to you i nor does any person have any obligation to somebody else's spouse i know that sounds shady i have no obligation to your wife <laughs> i have none you have obligation to your wife don't be calling me don't be texting me i have no obligation to the bond that you made and i'm a firm believer that his wife knew about all of this rich people are fucking crazy that's the tea there is no way she spent what 10 some odd years with this man and didn't know he was out here trying to bite lamb chops off her ass there's no way that these things were happening with the urges that he has and how strong he says that they are posting fucking pig heads and talking about meat to his instagram this is not new she is not surprised this is this is not this was not a secret of their marriage she knew about these things allegedly she knew Alleged. she knew allegedly but she knew allegedly. 10 years and he didn't let this slip you telling me 10 years and he had a mask on his normal man mask 10 years 10 same way you can't convince me these women married to these serial killers didn't know i had no idea he was killing he was out killing ma'am he was active for 14 years murdering and you didn't know you knew look Okay, so this video is kind of all over the place, the core of it, because like I said, I'm not gonna read through all of these messages. They are very, very upsetting. Consent is key. When you read the messages, and I really hope that you do, I submit to you, imagine, if you will, your friend sending you these messages after you've watched their mental health completely deteriorate. I submit that you ask yourself, what would this read as? Because there are people who are defending this type of behavior, whether it's army or not, whether these allegations are true or not. Reading these messages, what do they read as? Because they're fucking terrifying. The fact that he made each and every one of these women or young girls feel special, feel safe in some regard. To each of these girls, giving them a false sense of hope. And let's not even talk about the status that he has. He is a 6'5", handsome white man who comes from generational wealth. He already had more power than most of us do. And then he showed these girls attention. He showed them affections. He probably whispered a whole lot of sweet nothings. And then that weird ass cannibalistic sadistic side came out and it scared the shit out of some of these girls. But all they could think was, I do like him. He does care about me. He made me feel special. We've all been in similar situations where we, we, we made excuses for people we cared about and we got put into situations that we didn't want to be in. And I'm not even talking about just straight sexual. We've all been in situations that we didn't want to be in, but we pushed on through because we cared about the person and we thought that it was worth it. I truly feel that these women felt that. I truly feel that each and every one of these women felt it's worth it. It will work out. I do care about him. He does care about me. It will work out. 
and it didn't. And that isn't their fault. It was never going to be what they thought it was going to be because that he wanted power. That's it. And to eat them. Bitch, he was trying to barbecue some bitches. That's crazy. But he wanted power and he got it. He got it all over the globe. He had these women flying to him with their money. And it makes me really angry for all of them. It makes me so angry that these things happened to them and who knows how long they held on. Most of these women want to be anonymous and I don't even blame them. I don't want these women to have to give me proof these things happened to them. Reading those messages were enough for me. These women, these victims, these survivors are enough for me. And because I'm a bit biased, because I've been these women, I feel very passionately about it. And like I said, if you cannot move past thinking that these women deserved it, don't even waste your time interacting with me. Just go ahead and keep that in your spirit and keep it pushing. We don't have to interact with each other because I'm not going to interact with you. I'm just going to block you. But yeah, um, this is a long video. I just want you guys to take care of yourselves. I want y'all to enjoy yourselves. I want y'all to have nice, nasty sex. Like, I want y'all to have fun. But I want it to be consensual, okay? It's okay to try new things. It's okay to try things a couple times and then decide you don't like them. It's okay to revoke consent on both ends of the spectrum. If it's a group of y'all, y'all all need to have a group agreement on how shit gonna shake and pop down, okay? And let me just tell y'all, any of y'all watching, if y'all trying to have a threesome to save your relationship, don't do it. The relationship ain't strong enough. Y'all gonna be mad. Cause one of y'all gonna pay more attention to the new person cause that's a new, it's a new entity, you got new parts. You trying to see what that thing do. You're not strong enough for it. Don't do it to yourself. Cause I might just ask what the ice cubes were. What the ice cubes were. <laughs>